Welcome to TechSoup and welcome to the new member orientation. Today, we're going to be answering your questions. So we hope you have lots of questions. Some of you have been members for six weeks, 12 years, I think I saw. And we're glad you're here and we hope that you will get all the answers to your questions today. I'm going to show you how you can engage on the next slide. Um, many of you probably already been to some of our webinars, so you know you are on mute. So we would love for you to type your questions in the Q&A. We have some team members in the background who are like really quick at answering your questions. So you're going to be happy about that. Um, hopefully none of your questions are left on the table today. We are going to send you these slides and the video replay by tomorrow. So check your email so you can watch this video again and get some more insights and also share with your teams. If you need the closed caption, just type on the CC button at the bottom of your Zoom menu and you'll be able to see the transcripts. I'm going to turn this over to Nick and you guys have a great webinar. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's um, TechSoup new member orientation. My name is Nick Finn. I'm the head of global growth marketing at TechSoup. Um, that means I run a lot of meetings and talk to a lot of people all the time about various products and offers for nonprofits. Um, you've already met the wonderful Aretha Simons, who I've worked with for a few years now, and um, she does a wonderful job putting our webinar program together. Um, and later in the presentation, you'll also meet Kevin Mulhall and Kelly Garrett, uh, both of them folks at TechSoup who help uh, run broader teams that interact with the nonprofits who are TechSoup members. Um, and uh, with that said, let's get rolling on new member orientation. I'm going to start with some key terms that I think are important to just keep in the back of your mind as we talk about nonprofit technology in general. Um, the first is civil society, which is a term TechSoup and others use to really talk about the change makers and do-gooders around the world who are working in nonprofits, in charities, and other non-governmental organizations. Civil society are the folks who are working to make our communities and our world better, um, and that's how we refer to that entire group of folks and organizations. Digital transformation is another term you hear a lot about in nonprofit tech. Um, and I just explain it as embracing digital technology to enable and improve your nonprofit's functions and program delivery. So how are you using technology uh, to run your org and to deliver the services and execute on your mission? Digital resilience is making sure your nonprofit's technology can quickly respond, adapt, and continue to serve during an external disruption or crisis. And a great example of this is what folks, of course, were reminded uh, four years ago in 2020, the outbreak of COVID, suddenly we're all working remotely, people can't be in the same office together, yet many nonprofits, thousands of them across the United States, were still relying on paper and pencil accounting systems, which didn't work because you couldn't be in the same space together using those uh, resources. And it was just a great reminder of how important it is to have a cloud-based digital um, finance tracking uh, package. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, and then cloud adoption is this whole notion of technology really moving from the laptop or desktop that you have on your uh, in front of you when you work um, to data structures that rely on the distributed memory and computing power of the World Wide Web, right? So uh, data that your nonprofit works with is really stored in the web now, not on a local hard drive. And again, finance and accounting is a great example of where you want that to be the case. So let's get into the meat of it. What is TechSoup? So today's orientation is really designed for folks that are new to TechSoup. Um, if you've worked with us before, some of this may be repetitive, but I think uh, you'll probably learn some things as well from today's presentation. But let's start with the fact that TechSoup itself is a 501c3 nonprofit organization as well. So um I think that speaks volumes actually about how we come to this sector, what kind of work we try to do and the value that we bring to the sector um, because we're a nonprofit ourselves. We understand the reality that nonprofits face in terms of resource constraints and trying to do more with less all the time. Our mission is to support nonprofits working with technology to help build a more equitable planet. Our mission statement itself is a little bit longer and, and more sophisticated than that, but 
But for purposes of today's discussion, that really is what TechSoup tries to do. Uh, we're here to help the folks in civil society who work with tech uh, in whatever their mission is. Um, one of the ways we do that is that we host a catalog of affordable technology products for major brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many, many more. Um, the prices in our catalog um, almost always are lower than what you would get on an open market rate. Um, and the pricing we negotiate with these technology companies uh, based on the understanding that nonprofits themselves just don't have the same technology budgets that a big business might have at its disposal. Um, along with the catalog of products, uh, we also offer numerous services uh, to help nonprofits manage their technology stacks. And we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Um, we also create educational resources to help nonprofit staff build their tech skills and expertise. And like you, we also have our own line of grant-based programming where we apply for grant funding and we execute programs using that grant funding. Um, and uh, most of our work there is uh, to help civil society use technology and keep their stacks running properly. We serve nonprofits of all sizes at TechSoup, from the very largest uh, with budgets of over $100 million down to the very smallest, which maybe only have one volunteer executive director and an overall annual budget of less than $50,000, and some even much smaller than that. Um, all you need to work with TechSoup is to be a 501c3, um, and then uh, we can help manage. Um, we also empower a diverse group of change makers across a variety of different areas in terms of the social concern and what their mission is from uh, housing activities and civil rights, all through a bunch of different areas that you'll see outlined here on this chart. Um, but the point again being that really all you need to do is be a 501c3 to work with TechSoup um, and, and then we can work with you directly as a 501c3. So let's start with a quick view of the TechSoup catalog that I mentioned at the at the start. Um, this is what an awful lot of nonprofits come to first when they are looking to work with TechSoup. Um, it's what brings them to TechSoup and how they find us. Um, here on the TechSoup homepage, techsoup.org, um, you can quickly navigate to the catalog with the orange button there in the middle or up here in the uh, navigation bar at the top, obviously, where it says product catalog, not to make it um, too simplistic. Um, one of the major players in our catalog is Microsoft, who've been one of the earliest and longstanding partners with TechSoup as we provide tech to other 501c3s and nonprofits around the world. Um, these days, it's really Microsoft 365 or Office 365 Enterprise. It's the cloud-based productivity suite that we're all used to working with from Microsoft. Um, if you have been around in the workforce for some time, you might remember, you know, decades back where Microsoft Office meant a CD that you inserted in your desktop computer and then you loaded everything onto your local hard drive. Um, but these days, as I said in the cloud adoption slide earlier, everything's cloud-based coming through the internet down to your local computer and some of the software is, is hosted locally on your machine, but an awful lot of it also actually is up in the cloud and there's a constant conversation happening digitally between the two. Um, in addition to Microsoft 365, we also have access to the Windows Pro full operating system at TechSoup. And, and these are the two things that lots of nonprofits come to TechSoup with all the time. Adobe is another major brand that we work with, and our partnership with Adobe has been extremely exciting, especially if you're a nonprofit uh, worker who deals with communications or design or outreach, website, anything like that that requires visual graphics and designed elements. Um, we have uh, access to Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, we also have Acrobat Pro DC. Uh, which is kind of the industry standard for managing documents, uh, PDF documents, the portable document format. That's something that Adobe literally invented themselves. Um, and then we also have a new product in the catalog from Adobe that lots of nonprofits are quite excited about, um, and that's Adobe Express Premium. Uh, Adobe Express Premium is great 
for folks who specifically need to produce like quick short videos, doing social media content, um, and uh, who maybe don't have the depth and expertise in Creative Cloud that you would need. Adobe Express Premium is a little easier to use. Um, and so if you're not a trained designer, but you have some basic communications chops, I'd encourage you to take a look at Adobe Express Premium. And a particular excitement around that is that it is available at the moment for a $0 admin fee for nonprofits. Intuit QuickBooks is another big brand in the TechSoup catalog that lots of nonprofits uh, gravitate toward. Um, like I've already called out a few times now, uh, nonprofit finances and bookkeeping um, in a cloud-based environment is just a superior way to go at this point. Um, it's much more resilient. Uh, it means that people from multiple locations can work to make sure that your books are up to date, um, functioning correctly. Um, we, Quick, 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 Quick Books Online Plus and Online Advanced are the two products that most nonprofits are steering to these days. There are some legacy versions of QuickBooks in the catalog that will be going away soon. So these are the two that I would encourage you to take a look at. Um, and a quick reminder that uh, you will receive a copy of this deck after the uh, webinar is over. And there are links in this deck that you will be able to click through and um, check out some of these offers in the product catalog. And I also want to say that if you are at this webinar because you're thinking about joining TechSoup and you have not yet actually submitted your nonprofit's credentials, then um, you really do need to join TechSoup formally before you can use this product catalog. Uh, the join button's in the top right corner of the homepage. Um, it requires you to put in some of your basic information, like your email address and name. You've got to validate an email. Um, and then uh, you have to add your organizational information as well. But once you go through that process with TechSoup, then that catalog is open for you to look at and request um, items from. And, and as Kelly points out in chat right now, yeah, TechSoup is free for that initial mm -hmm. joining process. We do have some membership levels I'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, but that really is the first step. Uh, you know, um, Until you join TechSoup, these catalog offers would not be available to you. Um, there are many other major brands in our catalog, and I just highlight some of them here on this page to give you a, a fuller picture of what's available through TechSoup. And there are dozens beyond these brands um, that are also available. Um, but uh, again, you have to be a member of TechSoup to start exploring that catalog and using those products. So that really is the first step that you'd need to take. Um, another very big uh, compelling piece of the TechSoup catalog that nonprofits come to us for is access to hardware. Um, you cannot get to the hardware offers from the homepage. You have to go to the product catalog, which I've highlighted there in the top navigation. And then once you're there, you can go to the hardware drop down that's on, or the hardware link that's on the left side of the screen. Um, but our offers are focused on a couple of things. Um, we provide access to new and refurbished laptops and desktops. We have servers and networking equipment. We have internet hotspots. We have uh, headsets. And then, you know, each year there's a growing catalog of smaller hardware devices, you know, like mice and keyboards and small cameras, things like that, that are often moving through the catalog. Um, we often have some other one-off products that come and go through the catalog. For instance, right now, uh, we are working with Meta to provide access to the Meta Quest device. You can get that through TechSoup. Um, and uh, it's always just worth taking a look at that hardware catalog. Some of the bigger brands in there include Dell, Lenovo, and HP. Um, and uh, you know, you get a it's a zero dollar admin free through TechSoup, and then you get access to those Dell, Lenovo, and HP catalogs, where you do have to pay some money, um, but it's a discounted rate, which you have become uh, <clears throat> eligible for by becoming a TechSoup member. Um, the refurbished hardware is one of the biggest um, lines of business at TechSoup that's worth uh, highlighting here. Um, many years ago, uh, TechSoup staff started to really lead this notion that um, 
you know, we shouldn't just be taking hardware that's a, a couple of years out of date to landfills and disposing of it. It's not a green practice. It's bad for the environment. And, and that, in fact, some of this hardware, if it just had um, a little attention paid to it, was perfectly legitimate to continue using for several more years. And out of that grows our refurbished hardware program, where we have access to laptops and desktops, tablets, et cetera. Um, we're not the only place that provides access to refurbished hardware, but our pricing is very competitive. Um, and as I said, we, we were one of the leaders initially in, in suggesting that refurbished hardware was actually a direction that we needed to go. Um, and so we're proud to continue providing access to that for um, TechSoup members. Um, as I mentioned, uh, other devices or devices available are mobile devices. We've got monitors. Um, there's some printers uh, and the virtual reality headsets that I just mentioned there, which we're available through Meta through TechSoup right now. Um, beyond software and hardware, one of the big things TechSoup also now understands very clearly about the nonprofit sector that really um, getting technology is just the beginning. Um, once you have technology, there's an immense amount of work that goes into uh, maintaining it making sure it's updated appropriately, making sure that your nonprofit staff understand how to use it properly, um, uh, and uh, troubleshooting in those moments where things aren't working the way you think they should be working. Um, and over time, TechSoup has developed a series of services which continue to expand almost on a monthly basis uh, to help nonprofits uh, handle the technology that they already have or maybe even do some future planning for what technology they might want to be working with down the road. Um, you can get to our services offers through the uh, drop down at the navigation uh, on the top of the page again. Um, and so let me go through what some of those uh, services are. Avail uh, are. Um, there's a very basic service called a help desk service, which is really designed to help you, you know, deal with like one problematic device that you seem to have that really just seems to need consistent support. Um, you know, for instance, like that printer, um, for a lot of folks actually who are even working at home now, but they've got an office printer at home and maybe there's just, maybe it has a document feeder or something that just continues to not work the way you need it to work. Anyway, help desk is there for a single device support scenario. Um, and, uh, that's available both at a, at a one-off monthly cost. And there's also like a year long contract you can do for help desk services. We also provide a managed IT service, <clears throat> which is a much bigger comprehensive package where we can work with a nonprofit to manage their entire technology stack. Um, it's of course a more expensive, longer term uh, offer than the help desk solution is itself. Um, but managed IT is one of the biggest services that TechSoup offers and, and lots of nonprofits take advantage of that. Um, especially back to folks who work in communications or have to handle a website for their nonprofit. Um, I, I don't think I've ever met a nonprofit, including ourselves, who's completely satisfied with how their website operates. Everybody all the time has ideas about how we could do better with our website um, what it, you know, how it should look different. What what functionality should we have on there? Is the security good enough on it? How's the site speed? All these things. Um, and so over time, we've developed a host of website services to help nonprofits manage their websites, uh, implement changes as they see fit. You know, again, important to emphasize: this is not a free service. There's cost involved, of course. Um, but again, we find that our rates are extremely competitive with what uh, private sector vendors would be charging out there for similar services. Um, and again, being a 501c3 ourselves, we really do understand the resource constraints nonprofits face. Um, and so we work with you to make sure you can get the most out of that service. Um, lots of nonprofits, but not all of them. Uh, also engage in outbound marketing or outreach communications um, like advertising or email marketing um, or social media. Um, and wrapped into this also is SEO, which is search engine optimization, right? Making sure that Google sees your site properly and can send traffic to you if, if people search for things that are, you know, germane to what your nonprofit does. 
um, or CRM, which is the customer relationship management database, right? Um, all these marketing services uh, are designed to help nonprofits do better in those fields. How do you do better when you're doing advertising? How do you do a better job with email outreach and marketing? Um, and again, not a free service. There's cost involved, but the point is that the cost is very competitive and uh, we think very helpful to nonprofits to do better in those arenas. Um, for some folks who may not even have a website yet, we've got a new domain registration service at TechSoup, uh, which can help you get the URL or domain that you want to use for your nonprofit website. Uh, and then, of course, once you've done that, you could then work with our website services team to actually get that site put together. Um, and then for some other complex platforms like Office 365 through Microsoft that I mentioned earlier, uh, we've got an email and data migration service that we can uh, support nonprofits with. So if you have implemented Office 365 or really are struggling to implement Office 365, we can help you with that as well. Um, Finally, I want to call out something called the digital assessment tool, which is av available in that services dropdown. The digital assessment tool is designed as a way for nonprofits to answer a series of questions that help you understand how your nonprofit's technological maturity is in various different functional areas. So for instance, finance or communications or operations or even HR. Um, it helps you take a look you know, clearly at how your nonprofit is using technology in those areas. Um, and in some cases, it might even provide you with the evidence or data that you need to actually go out and secure some grant funding from an outside source to make updates and changes to your own functionality. Right. On from services, I want to take a quick minute here to focus on something called TechSoup Boost. Um, Boost is a membership service at TechSoup. Um, it's a $99 annual membership. Um, and uh, what it does is provide you sort of a, a, a TechSoup on steroids version, really. Um, there is a lot more, uh, th there's more savings available in TechSoup Boost um, and some unique offers that you may not always see in other parts of the catalog. Um, so, for instance, um, TechSoup is uh, this week launching a new partnership with Walmart, mm -hmm. where um, Walmart Business Plus is available to TechSoup members who are Boost members. Um, and uh, over time, we're building out Boost this year with a lot more content in it designed to help nonprofits with the decision making around uh, technology acquisition. So often... I have found this and anybody who's been in the position of having to source technology for an organization, we all know that you can you can search anything you want on the internet, you can read all about it. Um, you can leverage AI to ask questions about different products and how they compare, um, but it takes a lot of time and it's not always easy to understand whether or not you've got a clear answer to the question that you asked or even are you asking the right question? Um, and so Boost is building out content to help nonprofits make decisions around which tech product they need to actually get, um, some compare and contrast opportunities. You know, this tool does this, this other tool does something different. Um, uh, I think that Boost really is going to become the really most valuable sector of TechSoup over time. Um, and uh, so I encourage you to take a look at a Boost membership. Already there's just additional discounts and um, savings available in Boost. Um, we have a second membership product um, called Quad that I also wanna highlight here. Quad is a $200 annual organizational subscription. Um, and it's the most complete and robust engagement you can get with TechSoup. Um, and, uh, you know, all the savings and content from the Boost membership I just described are also available in Quad. Um, but in Quad, you're also going to see a much more um, detailed uh, look at how different nonprofit practice areas are using technology. So for instance, one area that we've done a lot of work in in the last few years is working with organizations on food security, you know, uh, soup kitchens and 
folks that provide meals to folks who don't have access to nutritious food as consistently as human beings need. Um, and so we've learned a lot about how uh, organizations that work in that area need technology to function. Um, and we explore that in Quad and talk more about it. Um, there's climate uh, orgs are also doing discussions in Quad. Um, and it's another growing area of TechSoup that I think is extremely valuable and worth taking a look at. Um, you, for that $200 annual membership, you get 10 staff uh, licenses to go into Quad. So I encourage you to take a look at Quad as well. Um, now, having done that blindingly fast overview of the products, brands, services, memberships, hardware, um, uh, I want to bring up two of my colleagues here at TechSoup. Uh, the first is Kelly Garrett. Um, Kelly's an associate manager with the account management group, or what we would call client services at TechSoup. Um, Kelly's going to go into a little more detail with you about exactly what to think about when you're using the TechSoup catalog. And when you're managing your just account with TechSoup. So what Kelly's group really helps folks do is interact with TechSoup directly. They are not customer support for products, right? So if you have an issue with Microsoft or understanding something from Adobe or Intuit or something else, that's not what Kelly's group helps you with. But if you need to understand how to change something in your TechSoup account, you need to add a new member who can order on behalf of your nonprofit, or if you need to understand something around your eligibility for a particular offer or just how the website works, that's what Kelly and her team can help you with. So with that, Kelly, take it away. Thank you so much, Nick. I uh, appreciate it. Welcome, everybody. Hope you're having a good week so far. Um, I am a uh, the associate manager for the account management group, which is part of the client services department. Um, we are the team, as Nick was saying, that um, <clears throat> works on your, when you register and you're getting qualified, client services takes care of your qualification, um, reaches out for documents. Um, we also handle customer service. And I'm gonna get into a little bit of all of that now. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. So one thing that uh, my team is, we are the ones that you contact when you reach out um, on our live chat. Um, we used to have a phone line and some other options to contact us, but we've uh, streamlined everything into a live chat option on our website. Um, and so we are the team that you will speak to um, when you have questions about products, um, your account, um, charges, all of that good stuff. So one of the main things that we hear from our members is, I'm looking for this information, where can I find it? And a lot of times what we like to do is put all the information we have available about this product or service on our website. And we make sure that we make it very detailed, we cover as much common questions as we can. So a lot of times your question is probably answered on the website. You just need to figure out where that information is. Um, there is <clears throat> in the catalog, once you locate a product that you're interested in, um, whether it's using the magnifying glass on our website to type in QuickBooks and it pulls it up, or you use one of the, the options in the top left corner, you know, company, donor company, category hardware, you've navigated, you find a product, you open it, and here is the product page or the offer page, um, and it's going to have all the details. Um, First things first is I always recommend folks look at all the information underneath the product name. As you can see, it's right there in that first box. Um, it's going to tell you who the donor partner is. Donor partner is the company that created the product and owns the product and has donated or discounted it. Um, we do have products like QuickBooks Online that are donated. While it is a donated product, there is an admin fee that you will um, have to pay at checkout. That is listed right there in bright red. Um, it will always be the admin fee times the quantity. And then you'll also see other things like uh, what category is it? So this is an accounting product. It's also cloud computing. Um, you know, what kind of platforms? If it was Microsoft um, or PC only, it would say PC. If it was PC and Mac, it would say both. This has multiple platforms because it's an online cloud product. Um, this is also where you'd add it to the cart. And then below all that information is three sets of tabs. 
It's gray on white. It can be very easy to miss. So you just want to make sure that you click through all of those and scroll down the entire page and read everything because that's usually going to have the information you're looking for. Uh, next slide, please. So, for example, this one's middle tab is subscription details. It's got information on how you're going to renew the next year. It's got a link to system requirements. It's got a start date not um, notification there. And it's got limitations detailed as well. So it's I highly recommend always going through all three tabs, making sure you've read everything before you reach out to us. Saves you a little bit of time um, if you find the answer here, um, rather than waiting on hold on our live chat to get in touch with one of our people. Next slide, please. Perfect. So say you've read the product page and it doesn't have the answer you're looking for, or you're looking for support with your account. You've noticed you're not eligible for something for some reason. You've got questions. First place I recommend going is going to our help um, option at the very top, right next to where you log in. Or if you're already logged in, you'll see a circle with an outline of a person. That means that you can go to your account. And so it's going to be right there in the top right corner. So when you click on that, it's going to take you to TechSoup Support. Uh, next slide, please. And TechSoup Support is going to have a lot of really good um, common questions, FAQs, how-tos, all that good stuff is going to be here. Um, I know some people were asking about getting started with us. You know, if you're new, you're thinking about joining, highly recommend going to that get, Getting Started section. Great articles in there about, you know, best practices for registering, like, we require members to use their real uh, a real first and last name because members um, need to make sure that we can verify them. And also some of our partners require a person's name for as the contact. Things along those lines are all called out in there. Highly recommend getting um, started is where you get started. <laughs> and then from there, you can go check out the other articles. We are working right now on making these more robust. We're adding articles, we're updating them. Highly, highly recommend. Um, I did drop in at the beginning in the Zendesk chat that you're in right now for the webinar, and I'll put it again. But if you're looking to contact customer service, which that is part of client services, we have two great TechSoup support articles um, that will walk you through how to contact us. And if you're having trouble getting access to our live chat, we've got a great troubleshooting article that resolves most issues. Perfect. Next slide, please. So uh, TechSoup support, as Nick mentioned, you know, we are customer service. We aren't customer product support. Um, so a lot of times when you're needing help downloading, installing something, if you want someone to review your systems and give a recommendation, um, you want some one-on-one -on -one IT support, that's when you're probably going to want to go to this uh, TechSoup support article. And go through all the services that Nick's highlighted today. Um, it calls out Quad is a great membership to start with. A lot of individual options in there. And you can set up a, a consultation with them before you purchase it. Um, there's also a lot of other great services that Nick's gone over. So that, again, is available in TechSoup support. You will find um, that article is promoted. And you'll see at the top there, it's underneath the uh, support helpful articles. So you can always see where things are. There's articles related on the left and above it shows the pathway for it. So highly recommend going and checking that out. It is linked in quite a few of, of our uh, automatic emails too that you get. Like um, the one when you say, congrats, you've been qualified. This is linked in there. Okay, next slide, please. So as we kind of mentioned and um, is what we can and cannot do. Um, when you reach out to TechSoup customer service, we can help you with Eligibility questions, for example, um, just because you're qualified or validated with TechSoup does not mean you get access to every single partner's uh, nonprofit program. There's no one organization eligible, eligible for every single program that works with TechSoup. Um, so your organization type, your budget, your location, your size, um, you know, how many employees you have, all of that can affect your eligibility. And so that's something that client services can and customer service can talk to you about. We also can help you manage your account. Say you need to replace one of the representatives. We can help you do that. Or say you want to um, find some resources or some products and you can't seem to find on the website. We can help you do that. The things we can help you with is we're not IT support professionals. Um, you don't want me installing something on your computer. You know, I, that's not my job and that's not how I've been trained. Um, that's my, for my whole team. Um, we 
have the services there available um, if you need them. If you need product support, we always recommend going to the partner that created and donated or discounted the product or service. So for example, Intuit created and owns QuickBooks Online. You'd want to go to Intuit for QuickBooks Online support. Um, for helping navigate their website, the account, make updates, change the terminology, that kind of stuff the partner is going to take care of. And if they are unable to help you, you can still come back to TechSoup and we might point you towards a service. For example, um, Office is very hard to install. We have a, a very affordable installation support service where remote technicians will install it for you and walk you through everything. So we do have that available and we try to make sure we've got specific services available for things that we hear from our members needing all the time. But we on the live chat are not going to be able to walk you through the installation process. Um, In-depth functionality questions are another thing that will be, we have general overviews. We can give you all the information we have on the product page that I went over with you guys a few minutes ago. All that we can go over, but if you've got some very specific things you're looking for and you want to make sure have capabilities, like for example, some healthcare organizations are concerned about HIPAA uh, regulations and does this meet HIPAA regulations and requirements? That's something you probably want to go to Intuit and double check with them what their security systems are for their product. So that's an example of that. So general overview, absolutely. You're welcome to start with us, but we might point you towards a partner um, and say, hey, you know, Microsoft created this, go to them for support or Adobe, um, created this, go to them for support, things along those lines. So um, just be prepared for that. When you contact us, you might be directed to another support resource, service, or partner. So next slide, please. Um, so our chat service, um, our live, sorry, our live chat uh, became the main contact point for TechSoup customer service in January, 2024. Um, you know, after looking at all of our resources and all of our available options and what our members have been giving us feedback about, we felt it was best to go forward with a live chat. Um, the live chat does connect you to a real person. You are not getting connected to a bot. Um, when you join the chat, you will see that um, you have a standard automatic greeting telling you, hey, make sure you've got your EIN tax number ready so we can look up your account. Um, and some other information about wait times and things like that. So um, that starts off with that. But once you're connected and you're out of the queue and you start talking to someone, it's going to be a real person. We do not use chatbot. We do not use AI to communicate with our members. It is a real person you are talking to on live chat. Um, our hours are always listed in the health bubble um, and also... These are usually what our hours are, um, you know, subject to change based on holidays. Um, sometimes there's system outages, you know, life happens, things happen. So these are the hours we are usually available. But again, it can change. We do try to keep that TechSoup support article. How do I contact te TechSoup customer service up to date? Um, noting any closures. For example, we were closed last Monday for Cesar Chavez observance things like that. So we should have those um, hours noted in the help bubble and in that TechSoup support article if there are any changes. Uh, next slide, please. So just to give you a visual, again, this is in that TechSoup support article that is um, in the chat webinar chat right now. Um, if you're curious when I keep kind of mentioning it, those are the two articles I recommend bookmarking for us. Um, but you should usually see the help bubble should always be visible. Whether chat is open or not, that is a help bubble that connects you to TechSoup support as well. So you should always see that when you open it, as long as you're within our Pacific Standard Hours, and you'll see that is listed at the very top of the pop-up window in the bottom right corner in the black, white text on the black, um, you will see the live chat option. If you don't see the help bubble, if you don't see the live chat button, there is definitely um, a lot of troubleshooting you can do. Sometimes it's... Uh, Sometimes it's browser issues, sometimes it's internet issues. Um, one thing we highly recommend is using a computer to navigate our website. It's not super compatible with mobile devices like tablets and phones. Um, and so I do know that the live chat bo uh, box doesn't usually pop up on mobile devices on our website. So highly recommend using a computer to navigate and connect with us. Um, it will avoid issues. Next slide, please. 
this is kind of what I was going over here. All this information again is in that um, unable to access TechSoup customer service live chat. Um, it goes over the different troubleshooting. And right here, I've just got the top three things that usually fix the issue for members. Um, we do have two websites. The support one is for our FAQ and help articles. The TechSoup.org one is our regular website. Um, they're run on different systems, so each one functions slightly different. So something to keep in mind here, again, it's available on the website, So, and you will get a copy of this presentation to your email, and it's also available in our archives. So all of this is here for you guys, and you should be able to get in touch with us whenever you need. I will just add one disclaimer that we are very, very, very busy right now. It's the beginning of the year. It's tax season. We have lots of nonprofits coming to us. So we do have a bit of a wait time right now for the live chat. Um, you will get connected. Just make sure that you're kind of keeping the, the pop-up window open and you're keeping an eye on it for when someone does connect with you. But we are definitely experiencing long wait times and there's a little bit of a wait time for getting qualified right now. So just letting y'all know, beginning of the year, tax season usually hits us pretty hard. But once we get in the summertime, we usually see shorter wait times, it's a little quieter, and we're a little bit, um, we're able to get to you guys a little bit faster. And that should be all I've got for uh, for my presentation. Thanks so much, everyone. Appreciate you joining us. And um, maybe I'll talk to you someday in the future um, in our live chat. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Kelly. I know I know that's a lot to go over, folks. And um, uh, just to say that, uh, again, you'll get a copy of the presentation afterwards. So if some of this really does jump out at you, something you want to understand better, you'll be able to loop back to it. Um, next, I want to bring forward um, Kevin Mulhall, um, who uh, is another colleague here at TechSoup. Kevin's team uh, is the customer success team. And what they really do is work with nonprofits who are already engaged with the TechSoup catalog, who are working to update their technical stack and help them understand how to become more sophisticated about that, how to do better with the products that they have. Um, and uh, with that, I'll let you take it away, Kevin. Thanks, Nick. Um, so the nice thing here is, is my part is uh, only one slide. So it really hopefully shouldn't be too much to digest. So again, my name is Kevin Mulhall. I'm a senior technical CSM here at TechSoup. Um, wanted to wish everybody a good morning, afternoon. And again, thank you for joining us. So just a couple of things about us uh, specifically. I'm just going to be coming through the, running through the bullets, some of the bullets here. Um, our team, which is a team of four, um, has a combined uh, experience of 20 years helping nonprofits. Um, where we focus uh, our, our energy efforts and deliverables are around, again, as Nick mentioned, the products and services available uh, to nonprofits um, through what we consider strategic advisory engagements. We are not a managed service provider. Um, we are both uh, advisors and advocates. So I, I would Maybe we're advisory advocates. Maybe that's what we could call ourselves. Um, you would be working in the case when engaging with us with certified technology professionals and assessing things like your technology stack. I myself am multiple certified in Microsoft, AWS, and GCP. Uh, my colleagues, uh, some of my colleagues are as well. The goal of part of the interaction is to gain invaluable insights into the latest practices and principles in the nonprofit space Specifically, as far as the value adds that are highlighted here, we as a team are happy to engage and go over things and develop such as requests for proposals. Uh, we review scopes of work that come in through managed service providers. Um, a really important thing and as we've discovered that uh, sometimes um, what's the best price and product are aren't necessarily what's getting communicated to our customers as well as developing basic strategies surrounding fundraising. Where you can find us and engage with us uh, is, as Nick mentioned earlier, in the Quad platform. That is where we reside. That is how we're accessed. We're happy to engage with members in there to talk about a wide variety of items. We are kind of, in part, an extension of what the digital assessment tool in that organizations that go through that we are that we bridge that last step in between understanding what it is and confirming what you need versus lining you up with the products themselves 
that will best benefit your organization. Um, I'm going to be throwing my contact information into the chat. Again, happy to engage with people to discuss a little bit more about um, what Quad is. I see that it came in through an attendee um, and a little bit more about what we do. Great, thank you, Kevin. Um, so with that, uh, we have made it through our deck today. Um, and, and again, uh, I want to say thank you to each of you who took the time to learn a little bit more about TechSoup. Um, I, I think we really can help every nonprofit on this call, uh, no matter what your technology need is, um, even if it's to save a little bit of money by using the catalog, but but more so if you want to use some of the services TechSoup can provide or even take a look at some of the online um, resources that we have. Uh, again, to reiterate, you do need to be a member of TechSoup, a qualified 501c3. So if you have not done yet that yet, please go to that top right-hand corner of the site, click that join button and start the process. Um, and just to say, by the way, in that process, um, feel free to also add items to your cart and check out if you want to. Um, I do know that uh, you know we maintain a queue all the time that we are working to get validated or qualified, as we call it internally. Um, but they prioritize the um, nonprofits that actually have an order pending in the shopping cart. So uh, if there is something specific that you're interested in, um, please feel free to go ahead and add that and, and check out, and it, it may actually expedite the process of becoming qualified. Um, with that. Uh, I thank you all for your time and attendance today. I think that there will be a quick post-event survey that you will receive um, uh, along with the deck. Um, and uh, as I said, there are live links in the deck that should take you through to various different products and services if you want to take a look at that stuff. Um, uh, and other than that, thank you for the work that you do in your communities. I know that working for a nonprofit um, takes long hours, it takes uh, real diligence, and it takes uh, really caring about the community and the mission of the organization you're working in. And, you know, for all of us here who are working in the nonprofit field, you know, just thanks um, and appreciate your time and attention today. Have a great rest of your day.